Bloodless surgery. From the cruise missile to the operating table, technology on the cutting edge. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Going under the cyber knife could save the lives of many cancer patients. Technology on the cutting edge. They said that I would be paralyzed if not dead, but they were wrong on both accounts. <laughs> this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Going under the mouse technology on the cutting edge that takes the scalpel out of surgery. Surgery without a scalpel. This is about using space age military technology to wage war against cancer in a whole new way. It could make the phrase going under the knife obsolete. It's technology on the cutting edge without any cutting. Here's ABC's John Yang. Think of surgery and you usually imagine this. But this? No scalpel, no blood, no post-operative pain. What's she feeling now? Well, the last patient was experiencing hunger and boredom. I don't know that this patient's going to be any different. It's called CyberKnife brand new technology that combines powerful radiation with pinpoint accuracy to kill tumors. Well, it changes everything about surgery. Neurosurgeon Dr. John Adler developed this revolutionary non-invasive device. This is all done remotely, done automatically. All the, though the doctor remains a critical element of the entire surgical process, it changes the whole notion of what surgery is. It uses technology similar to what the Pentagon devised to target cruise missiles. For the first time, digital x-ray images target the tumor, even if the patient's head moves. That accuracy lets doctors use stronger doses of radiation, resulting in fewer treatments and less damage to surrounding tissue. That's what appealed to Dana Garner, who has a tumor on her hearing nerve. I didn't want them cutting into my brain. There are so many possibilities of uh, nerve damage. It allows us to treat the tumor with uh, excellent uh, chance of killing the tumor and or preventing tumor growth but minimizing the chance of injury to the nerves that are adjacent to the tumor that control facial movement and hearing. For some it's the only option. Valerie de Grendel had a growth in her spinal cord that surgeons could not reach. There was just no other way. They, they had given up on me. They said that I would be paralyzed if not dead. The technology is available in five hospitals around the country. The FDA has cleared its use on tumors in the head and neck. Soon it could be used on tumors anywhere in the body, even potent cancers in the lung or breast. It's outpatient, it's less expensive, and overall it probably is even more effective than regular surgery for the number, large number of cancers that we're treating at this point. For patients like Dana Garner, that means the hope their tumors may be eliminated more efficiently without the fear of traditional surgery. John Yang. ABC News, Stanford, California.
By all accounts, 10-year-old Darrell Johnson is a happy, healthy little boy. You would never know that less than eight months ago, his life was hanging in the balance. Darrell was born with a malformation of the blood vessels in his brain, and that malformation uh, hemorrhaged as they are prone to do. When we were at the hospital, uh, the doctor told us he had a, basically a 50-50 chance of survival because there was so much blood in his brain. Darrell managed to survive, but he wasn't out of the woods. Without proper treatment, Darrell would live the rest of his life waiting for this to possibly happen again. His parents searched for an answer and found it at the Alvin and Lois Lapidus Cancer Institute at Sinai Hospital of Baltimore. It's called the CyberKnife, and it is groundbreaking and unique radiation therapy that uses cruise missile technology to accurately locate the problem. When I heard about CyberKnife, I initially only thought of it in reference to cancer. But when I found out that it actually applied to Darrell, I was, I was incredibly happy. The CyberKnife works by precisely locating lesions and tumors in the body and then uses a high-energy X-ray source mounted on a robotic arm to deliver highly focused beams of radiation. This targeted technique allows the maximum amount of radiation to get to the lesion or tumor while protecting surrounding tissue. It is completely painless. Older methods of radiosurgery require a rigid head frame that is literally bolted into the skull. The uh, use of a uh, head frame on a child is difficult because it requires uh, sedation and it requires a lot of cooperation from the uh, patient. And so uh, and when we were able to treat him with the cyber knife, it was much easier for him and his uh, parents. It's accurate within less than one millimeter. It's pretty, pretty amazing. We can use this as surgery without the scalpel. Uh, the difference being that there is no pre-op workup, there's no anesthesia, there's no bleeding, uh, there's no hospitalization. The high precision and accuracy of the cyber knife enables doctors to achieve a surgical-like outcome for lesions of the brain, neck, lung, and spine. Doctors hope to be able to treat other types of tumors in the near future. I like the lasers pointing all around the room. My mother said I look like the Incredible Hulk or Wolverine from X-Men. The following day he went back to school. Um, it was just like nothing had ever happened. Thanks to the cyber knife, today Durrell is back to normal and has resumed his life as a healthy young boy. We were thinking maybe five to six years before he's back to normal. And here, it hasn't even been a year yet. He's back to the same old kid all over again. To tell you the truth, my feeling is we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what this thing can do. Uh, we don't know yet what it can't do. We, we have no idea what its limits are.